how Doctor Who can avoid making uh, Marvel's messiest mistake. Well, it's not going to avoid it. That's bottom line, right? It's not going to avoid it. Let's start with the fandom discontent, right? And there's just a lot of fetching, right? David Tennant's 14 talks that happy ending makes one companion's fate even worse. Uh, I guess so. I mean, it, it, well, Donna for a start. But, like, I, I did, yeah, like, leaving him still, still on the board, I think was just such a dumb idea. Like, having Shooty change his clothes every episode. I, just a dumb idea. Have a still be wet. Right, I, I know shooters are clothes, but have a silhouette. So what? So what's their point over here? Uh, Doctor Six anniversary specials uh, made a happy ending for the Fourteenth Doctor, but his new home highlights uh, the history of another companion. What Donna? David Tennant's latest. I mean, basically, after about a month, everyone's going that was shit. <laughs> David Tennant's latest return uh, to Doctor Who had a satisfying collision. No, nothing about it was satisfying. Nothing. Well, I, I am unsatisfied by everything. Uh, for the hard-working time run as Lord Companions, but their happiness only reinforces the raw deal received by former associate uh, of the Doctor. Uh, who are we talking about? Many of the Doctor's companions end their, tra uh, their travels miserably. Many? Now I've got to go through them, haven't I? So um, Susan knew what she's doing when she left uh, post, uh, uh, you know, a Dalek invasion of Earth, London. And I think she may probably made the right decision. I think the Doctor made the decision for her. Uh, Ian and Barbara are very happy to leave. Vicky, where did she go in the end? Oh, she stayed in um, ancient. Greece was it or wherever again seemed very happy to do so uh, uh, I'm you know catching up with her now on the, the Stephen Noonan set where she's older uh, what happened to uh, uh, was it? it not him Stephen what happened to him he came on on uh, the chase and where did he leave he left oh he left on a, on a little lost story which is why, why I don't remember it so well uh, the savages Again, still, he, he seemed to have quite, quite. He was quite happy to leave, right? So Stephen. Then you had uh, Dodo was written out in the middle of a story. Poor girl. Uh, much better as as, as look, what was it? Look, Lauren Cornelius. Uh, Dodo's written out. So then you had uh, what's the name? Um, Polly uh, Ben and Polly, who left. Who just happened to left at the end of the Faces ones, wasn't it? Um, Victoria seems to stay behind quite happily, but was still, you know, is suffering from post traumatic stress disorder. It was that was a weird ending for Victoria, right? Uh, uh, and Zoe and Jamie, yeah, they had sad endings, right? They had sad endings with their uh, memories erased. Uh, Liz, no, she was a fine ending. Joe had a left happily. Uh, Sarah Jane Smith, uh, well, yeah, she'd be caught up with her 15 years later in school, school reunion. Uh, that didn't go so well, but you know, uh, she had a, quite a, a pretty darn good life. I wouldn't say, okay, none of the no one's last one has had a tragic fate, and I'm like halfway through the classic right now, right? Leela, uh, lived on Gallifrey, then you had Romana stayed in East e Space, uh, and then come back and was high prison on Gallifrey, Gallifrey for a bit. Uh, you had oh, Adric had a tragic end, but he was an annoying twat, so it's all okay, right? Adric had an annoying end, um, and Tegan was like, Oh, too many good people died today. Uh, she, 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 had a, she, she had a tragic, I wouldn't call it tragic, she just left, right? It's not fun anymore, doctor, right? Um, Sarah Sutton stayed on to clear, uh, to cure Lazar's syndrome, and again. We saw a later media she had a pretty darn good life. Uh, who, who's next? We had okay. Perry was either uh, Brian Ble Blessed's uh, uh, fuck queen toy, uh, uh, or uh, Lord Kiv, or both. Right? Yeah, you could call. Yeah, you could call either one of those reasonably uh, uh, tragic. Uh, Ace went off. Depends what you want to believe. To the Time Lord Academy. Uh, Charlie ended up with the sixth doctor, and I can't understand that. That sounds a bit rough. Uh, Rose 
no, she stayed in another universe. Um, then you had uh, Bill, po uh, not Bill Potts, who had uh, Martha went back to being a doctor and worked for Torchwood. Uh, Donna came back for a series of boring adventures. Uh, uh, and uh, okay, Donna had a tragic fate that got taken away by the 14th Doctor. So, no, okay, three. Fuck you. Three over 60 years, right? Uh, uh, there should have been another way. I, I like what you're talking about. Many of the doctors, three of them, uh, uh, miserably. I don't think that, I think that's bollocks, right? I think that's bollocks. Uh, so it was a refreshing change to see Catherine takes Donna Noble settle in for a domestic rollover with David. No, it was shit. It was shit. The more boring and domestic you make Doctor Who, the more shit you make it. Right? That's how it works. The more boring and domestic you make Doctor Who, the more shit you make it. Uh, this meant 15 Doctor was able to resume uh, his travels on the 14th of a much needed recovery period after the centuries of uh, heroics. The ending of the Doctor Who's 60th anniversary specials left 40. Okay, fine. But. Uh, um, so Martha is the only main era, uh, tenant era canon not to end up with the doctor in some form, or well, she didn't want to. <laughs> How is that bad? That's like the only not bad thing. Uh, um, she had, I guess, Rose ended up with the Erstats doctor from the uh, in the other dimension, and uh, Martha ended up with Mickey. Uh, Donna ended up with a doctor. <sighs> this is just dumb. Martha always deserved better and doctor. Like, what? How did she? I, I don't understand. I don't understand how Martha was dissed by this, right? I do not understand. Uh, doctor is pretending a shooting up the season, uh, first season of season one is where Rusty Davis is going wrong. Actually, so I think that's one of the few things he's doing right. Again, look at this plethora of, of uh, articles where they're saying we're not happy, right? We are not happy with how things are going. Uh, Doctor Who's misguided attempt to mark uh, Margaret Shuddy Gut was first season as the show's uh, season one. It actually is bigger problems from the series of Russell Davis. Despite season 14 of the revival, official Doctor Who marketing refers to it as season one. Not only uh, not does lang uh, language indicate a major reset is on the way. No, a major reset is here. Look, once you change the word gravity to mavity in your universe, you're now in a, like you're in a different little world. Um uh, uh, but uh, in a very demonstrate the show has been uh, uh where the show's been falling short. No, I think where the show's been falling short is this desperate like connect, uh, clinging on to the past where they want to just be moving forward. Move forward if you want to move forward. Uh, after you said blah, 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 Chivnall, blah, 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 returns as head writer, considering uh, Russell Dio, Moffat and Chivnall's distinctive writing styles, uh, uh, good, great shit. Uh, and, and the approach for the wider Doctor Who mythology, most audiences understand that the show uh, can change in tone from style from season to season. However, an explicit season one reset has always been uh, uh, suggested by promotional material, is a step too far, even for such a why. Uh, makes no sense. What, what's upsetting you? I don't know. I really don't know what's upsetting you about this. Rather than continuing a continuation of character arts, themes, and overall story from what's gone before, describing as season one suggests a complete reset. That, exactly. Did you not see the church on Ruby Road? That's what it was. It was a complete reset. But like, it had completely forgotten what went before, right? And, and like, oh, I just found out I was adopted. Yeah, I don't believe that's all about the time as child. Yeah. In much the same way, Christopher Eccles' Doctor allowed the show to honor what came before by uh, establishing a completely dis a distinct and expanded mythology. This language suggests that Gat was take on the character would deliver a, a similar, uh, similarly radical change. However, there are several reasons why claiming such an approach just it, uh, doesn't make sense. Oh, well, let's hear it then. Well, I think Eccles season one was generally separate from the later. Okay, so first problem, you're having trouble dealing with the fact that the Jodie Whittaker era completely failed. 
right? You don't want to like why? Why would you hit the reset button? Because you was burnt to the ground. Moron. <laughs> right. Okay. But but why else? Or well, what what nothing to be anything else. That's just that. Uh this funny reason within the traditional established revival era rather than something genuinely new. Despite the many changes in personnel, Gut was Doctor is still the same character. Yes, he's still the one who was a girly. Yes. Uh, um, all just has been familiar with over the last 19 years. Well, not really. The doctor, we haven't seen the doctor since 2017. That's a long time now. So 18, 19, 20, uh, seven years. It's been seven years since we've seen the doctor. Right? Jodie Whittaker, wasn't it? And you can tell because everybody stopped watching it, right? That was a bit of a giveaway. Uh, uh, whatever the direction the story takes, the history will still uh, uh, play a huge role. No, they've, they, the by regenerative has split it off completely, right? A second consideration is purely practical uh, because of the inescapable connection between all the uh, all 19 years of the revival era and season 14. Uh, simply declaring Shooting Cat was debut season as season one on a whim is unfeasible. It's not on a whim. It's They need to separate from what came before. Rusty Davis may wish to ignore and rewrite some of the controversials. No, he's he, he's tacitly supporting him in every way. Uh, they remain uh, an exceptional part of the show's law. No, they don't. Again, you need to let go. Do you remember that thing you said to people about uh, uh, moving on? When uh, uh, they all say, what the fuck is this China Charles Bollocks? Yeah, you need to play that advice. You say, Move on. We've forgotten about it already. It's over. Pushing the reset button, uh, having made a little, I'm going to guarantee one of the uh, problems he's, he's, he's going to uh, come up with was it's going to validate the alt right white, the alt right white supremacists. Right? I bet he's going to go with that. Let's find out. Uh, uh, so the human era, blah 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 blah. What, uh, 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 pushing the reset by not having little, uh, having made little indication that it was ever part of the overarching plan, it never was. Will disappoint fans of the Chibnall era, well, all seven of them, uh, and feel uh, disingenuous to others who want a genuine change of direction. If Doctor, uh, if Doctor can be restarted with no uh warning, there's little point investing in the narrative. Well. Yes, that, that's what we told you when you did the Timeless Child. And you're like, no, it's the future. Standing and brave, we all trans, let's move forward. Yeah, okay, move on, baby. Doctor Who is trying too hard to create a new era. You know, this is something I actually, I actually agree with. If you look at Great so again, Face of Evil, right? It's an unpretentious story. The very clever unpretentious story uh, uh, dealing with interesting sci-fi ideas of like self and reality and artificial intelligence uh, uh, and psychology and sociology is brilliant. It re- it's, it's so clever, right? It's so in- and fun and, in- and entertaining. And Louise James is fantastic in it. Uh, across the, inter- uh, who's, uh, across the entertainment industry, uh, announcing a new era is a uh, tried and tested method for reigniting audience interest. In fact, Doctor Who's distinctive regeneration gimmick is one of the reasons why the show remains so enduring, enduringly popular. It also allows the show to shake things up when things get stale. However, uh, despite the success of this approach, Doctor has been drawn into ever more elaborate attempts to uh, demarcate distinctive eras and create a blank slate. <sighs> Not, only since Chibnall, really. Right, uh, uh, a prime example of this uh, is the show's by by generation, introduced both in the 60th Doctor's anniversary of the Giggle. The new plot device allows both Tenet's 14th Doctor and Gat was 15th Doctor to coexist simultaneously, and all the other Doctors. So you can have like old Colin Baker play the Doctor again, uh, uh, having two distinct stars uh, as a method of introducing viewers to a new Doctor. It was certainly novel, and it failed. It was a bit shit. However, in attempting to uh, herald a new era, it also wrote much of what uh, viewers understood about the Doctor's di- uh, different incarnations, undermining the impact of the early stories in the process. Right, wanting to see what new direction is, un- uh, is understandable, but you shouldn't come at the expense of the rules and conventions uh, that may help make the show so enjoyable. We said this to you uh, at the time as children. 
And you're like, it's the best this ever. It's the best this ever. Does this guy, have you ever seen they got any articles on the title show? From Tommy Lethbridge. You know that name is some real Tommy uh, features editor. Uh, let's see how far back we go. We find it, when's this from? 2017. Let's see if we can find any Doctor Who articles. I'm uh, just looking at the thumbnails. There's certainly nothing I'm in any way interested in seeing. No. So, literally no more articles on Doctor Who. Right? Uh, no. Okay. Features editor. Well, he looks like he's 12. Like, he literally looks like he's 12. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Fine, yeah. So, again, yeah, we, you've taken away everything we liked about it. We'd made it so enjoyable. Well, I know they took away the timeless children, uh, uh, essentially. Uh, Doctor already has two season ones. It can't have a third. It already does. Right? I'm sorry you're fighting, you know, counting to one three times tricky. But, yeah, it already does. Well, there's so many uh, compelling, uh, well, there are many compelling narrative reasons why converting season 14 into season one simply won't work. There's a strong uh, logistical argument that uh, after the post excellent era revival, Doctor has already had two season one from 63 is uh, 2005. Adding a third at 2004 would uh, not only seem ludicrous from an outside perspective, but also make developing an established franchise. Okay, it's gone. Your idiot, timeless children destroyed the established franchise canon. It's gone. Fucking up, moron. It erased the timeless children. Yes. So the reason for that. Unlike in 2005, it has not been brought back uh, from cancellation. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Today, the show is an internationally recognized and acclaimed brand, which has been in the shitter for the last seven years. But loved by millions of the world who, and they, no, can you show me metrics to support that? The only justification for season one style reset is if the series plans to totally ignore everything that happened in the preceding 19 years. Uh, not really. This is not, not, not our RC Davis approach to confirm by the returning characters like Bonnie Langford. No. I just think he wants to uh, uh, start the brand afresh because it was beaten into the ground by Jodie Whittaker because she was shit and she totally failed, right? Totally failed. Uh, more fan... Again, this is a lot, all these in the last couple of days. Rossi, Dave Williams and David Tennant Fortnite had two big, fu uh, big future problems. Not really, just ignore it, essentially. Uh, David Tennant Fortnite will probably return in Doctor Who's future. I'm not sure, actually. Uh, I don't think Doctor Who has much of a future. I, I, I'll be surprised. Um, uh, I'll be surprised if it go, if if it makes it to season three. I, I really will. And again, we, we, I'm going to be surprised if Big Finish are, are are still putting out product by June. So you know, put that into perspective, right? Uh, Russell Davis, and look, we are we are on the bro brink of global war and we have been for a long time and like living in history is much more boring than reading it right and reading it you know you go you would go go over the last seven years in three paragraphs essentially right uh uh and then we, you, we're literally living in 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 the war right now i think uh wait, 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 wait. i don't think it's the 14th doctor is parked with donna noble's family but there are major reasons why this plan firstly with Disney, uh, while Disney is in control of Doctor Who, they now have a seat at the table. Considering the name recognition um, poor David Tennant, there's no way they will want him uh, out the show entirely. Plus, giving Tennant's Doctor a TARDIS, they set up the... Yeah, but I'm not interested in any more tranny who. I'm sorry. I think most people who are like just not interested in Doctor Who are not interested in tranny who. Right? Which is what this is. It's tranny who. Uh, second, it's our character of the Doctor remain uninvolved if aliens were attacking Earth. 
Yeah, no, the whole idea is shit, right? I'm sorry, the whole idea is just shit. Uh, Doctor has to be very careful with how it uses David Tennant and past actors. Um, okay. Right, look, the only past actors they can really use is David Tennant, Paul McGann, uh, Capaldi, and Matt Smith. Matt Smith is and Capaldi are deeply uninterested. Or Anne Eccleston. Eccleston will do it if somebody else other than the BBC and Disney are making it, um, which would be hilarious. <laughs> um, but yeah, And there's no real need to bring them back, frankly. Again, I keep saying this. They should have done a complete reboot, new universe, Doctor Number 1 after Capaldi, right? They should have like had to completely reboot reality, and you start and build up your own lore again. And maybe you, know, you can like remember the uh, other, other you, your past lives in a dream, sort of tantalizingly, right? There's a but it built up your own lore, which is what they wanted to do anyway. Uh, additionally, the frequent use of uh, doctors uh, could prevent viewers from getting on board with the shooting gap. Was doctor? Yes, it's a bad. Yes, you, I'm glad you're all noticing. It was a bad idea. It was a bad idea. Don't think it was a good idea. It was a bad idea. Uh, since Doctor Who only, uh, uh, only one include, uh, since Doctor Who included one Doctor at a time, except the occasional special, the uh, viewers had to invest emotionally in a new iteration. After all, exactly. I think to Toya, uh, Toya Wilcox said that, right? That she was really miffed when uh, Patrick Troughton took over, right? Uh, uh, he was like, who is this? But then uh, uh, after a, a week, she didn't care, right? Uh, uh, that's part of the... And they, passing the torch is a thing, but having him sit around, it's just dumb. And screams of lack of confidence. It's a dumb idea, Russell. Like many of your ideas, they've been dumb. You had a lot of dumb ideas, Russell. I'm sorry. But a lot of dumb ideas. Not a few, a lot. Uh, since Doctor Who only included one Doctor at a time, except blah, 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 blah. You're right. Exactly. Exactly. Fine. More discontent. Doctor Who, uh, season 14, uh, exit for uh, Millie Gibson's uh, exit. Just suicide. I mean, one fan theory will remain a mystery. What's the fan theory? Uh, miss, uh, the Mrs. Love Doctor Who theory probably won't ever be answered. Well, I probably will. With many gives and leaving, the probability of the Mrs. Flood theory getting answered is, uh, is slim to not. I disagree. I think it's probably what they have to do in the standalone episode. Doctor Who definitely plays a long game setting up store uh, setting up storylines a good amount of time before they come to fruition. Well, Chibnall did, that's for sure. Uh, if, for instance, Bad Wolf started again, it was in fine. If Doctor Who uh, didn't conclude the Mrs. Flood storyline season, it would feel out of place uh, to confirm her as the older Ruby uh, after the companion leaves the show. No, she can't be again. Mrs. Flood, if you didn't see it, right? Mrs. Flood was Anita Dobson. She was like an uh, interfering neighbor and she was mad at the TARDIS being parked outside her house. Like, what is that thing she kept saying? Then at the end of it, you saw Millie Gibson go in the TARDIS. She, she said, go in, you'll have a great time to the TARDIS. Yeah, uh, uh, and she went in, and then she breaks the fourth wall, looks at the camera and says, what's the matter? Never seen a TARDIS before. Um, so it's not like she, she didn't know what TARDIS was at the beginning of the episode. Um, yeah, I think this is bollocks. I think it's bollocks. I think they uh, uh, they are going to wrap up her, her story arc. But yeah, but she was also fired, right? Well, secretly a soft reboot show. It wasn't secret. Right? It wasn't secret, you ding-a-ling. Right? <laughs> it, was, it wasn't secret. Okay, so they have built up this TARDIS and built up this TARDIS and built up this TARDIS like nothing on the earth. Uh, uh, and now we see it, and, and for my money, it's shit. Right? I, I Very disappointed. And putting a jukebox in there doesn't do much. It's stale, boring, booper hospital shit. Yes, I understand. It's wheelchair friendly. Whoa, wheelchair friendly. Yeah, I mean, like, and I, yeah, okay. So you got all the lights like synced up together. I don't really care. I thought the season fourteen uh, um, Tardis interior was superior, right? Like, I really do. I think the season fourteen Tardis interior 
was uh, uh, Jade, you had, I really do. I think it was better, right? This console's too bloody big. It's all ridiculous. It's all stupid. It's too big for no reason, right? Other than they got to spend their budget. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Look, honestly, the TARDIS should be a place that you use as a conveyance, right? I, I mean, like, how how much was the TARDIS in? Uh, uh, I don't know, Terror of the Zygons, right? Or um, Pyramids of Mars? Like, not much. Like Pyramids of Mars, they went quickly to 1980, and that was it. It should be a room. Like, you can make an interesting... Like, for my mind, the best TARDIS was still the 8th Doctor's TARDIS. I like that TARDIS a lot. But, like... This is dull. Right? Uh, oh, you clever thing. To celebrate the TARDIS the most magnificent makeover yet. No, it's not. Paul Kirkley gets a lowdown on the creation from jo Joel Collins. He's the new producer. Uh, Phil Sims, a production designer... And Chrissy Howell, senior art director, and David Tennant, Time Lord. I know. This is and this is exactly what this new era is altogether. Like a ridiculous expense for no real point, right? There's no real delivery to this. There's like, well, I was. Oh god, it's so annoying. It's just, it is. It's just so. It's such a intense waste of resources. Ah, uh, so let's see what they have to say for themselves. Uh, as Tuesday mourners go uh, on the t uh, on Tuesday mourners of the time go, this one feels fairly historic. One uh, on the raised gantry on which the famous hexagonal console uh, now sits. The fourth thing is Doctor David Tennant, a boring fucking doctor, if you ask me, is performing a uh, universe's most important job. Uh, hand over to uh, to Shooty Gatwell for complicated reasons. Time was in his own I hated it. That was all shit. Uh, watching from below, uh, Doctor Who magazine can't help but uh, think of William Hartnell and Patrick Trafford from the same ritual. In <sighs> oh, blimey. It's a far, far bloody cry from that. Well, not quite the same ritual. Uh, uh, both men had their trousers on for a start uh, and not quite the same set, uh, but you... Uh, uh, but uh, only marginally bigger uh, on the inside first TARDIS have been uh, reimagined on a monumental scale uh, and the three walls of Pleasant Blackmore's iconic uh, uh, original design were transformed in a vast cathedral of light and space. Yeah, but it's not very good. After a month of planning, six, a 16-week build, the new TARDIS is still fresh in the box and it's only the second day on the uh, on filming on it and everyone's still working on the best angles to make the, to make it look as ravishing as possible on screen. But even the uh, house, uh, even the house lights on, and some missing roundels removed to accommodate. I, I bet it's impressive to be on, but on screen you're like, what the fuck? And it's even everyone's got big white screens now. It's not very good, right? It's not very good. Uh, you know, the missing roundels, uh, uh, roundels uh, removed to accommodate extra scaffolding supports, exposing the inner wiring, but it's clear the new design has taken the Doctor's possible science to a new level, uh, several several new levels, in fact. It's curved uh, walkways sweeping gracefully uh, into 50-foot rafters of Wolf Studio Stage 6, while this, uh, the large circular camera shutter doors uh, hint at an infinite unseen uh Hinterland beyond. I, I, I'm bored by it. Some things, though, are still reassuringly low tech. The time rotor. No, it's not low tech. Uh, um, the time rotor, for example, is still manually operated by somebody pulling on a rope. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, and in between shots, a uh, um, uh, member of the regulation cargo short uh, making running, blah, 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 blah. Joel Collins, executive producer. When Rusty Davis relaunched Doctor Who in Vice, he tried something uh, new with the TARDIS. It was uh, quite coral, quite warm. Exactly. There was intimacy. Something missing from this one and a business to it. This time, uh, he wanted a vast space. And I think uh, he was eager to enjoy the show, uh, the history of the show a bit. I don't know. I think he should have left the history alone and moved forward, frankly. 
if you look at what's uh, redeveloped, uh, if you look at the way we've redeveloped the, uh, the diamond logo, much the same thing. Where uh, uh, it's much the same thing. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're trying to bring. Okay, listen. There were uh, there, there weren't like sly, sly gay analogies uh, uh, in in the original Doctor Who. I'm sorry. I mean, look, uh, Happiness Patrol. Yeah, no. What about the Doctor? Uh, and there wasn't like this uh, religious, uh, uh, non-theistic religious requirement that you believe that women have penises, right? Uh, uh, um, that's something that you've insisted on putting in there. So, uh, and I think you slapped the diamond logo on it to make yourself kosher. Uh, we're trying to bring there. So, so we looked at the TARDIS. Uh, uh, so we looked. Uh, so the way we looked at the TARDIS was not how clever can we be with it. It was. If they were able to do this in 963, would they have done it? Well, he should have rebooted the show completely then. It hadn't been the first Doctor. Genuinely, that's what I mean, which is basically what you're doing. So I said, Joel bought Phil Sims on board, the uh, new series uh, production designer. Uh, I know Phil Sims, like, yeah, he works on Back to the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Black Mirror. I like the design of Hitchhikers, don't get me wrong. Uh, if you've been asked to design Doctor Who, then the TARDIS is the drawing ground, so I wanted to get my teeth into it. Oh, it's so boring. It's so boring! Uh, I love the queen, clean white setting of the old TARDIS of William Hartnell era onwards, and I like the idea that the TARDIS could turn up in Star Trek or Star Wars and Black. I, it's made it so much more boring for it. Because uh, I'm a sci-fi nerd, but no, the TARDIS used to be unique. It used to be something that you wouldn't get in Star Trek or Star Wars, right? Unfortunately, didn't go, didn't, things didn't go according to plan. Oh, I got it uh, wrong. Or rather, I got it right. So, And then I got it wrong again. What? what? Uh, I got the space and the shape right, but my in my bedroom over Christmas, I sort of disappeared in my old dark alley of all these hard uh, metal, uh, uh, of all these hard metal, almost concrete textures. Uh, Russell thought it looked like a bunker or a bad is lair. <laughs> Not far off now. It didn't look like it was full of jo uh, joy uh, and air and stories. It certainly doesn't look like that now. I uh, I took the fun out. Basically, I made it look quite sinister. You, you've done that anyway. Can't believe it. I, I'd love to see what it looked like. So I understand Russell wasn't over the moon with that. But after uh, after another weekend working on it. I, uh, we got back on track and he loved it, so I was happy. Fuck me, I want to see the things you threw out. So got Chrissy House engineers. Uh, so I got uh, by the time, uh, but at the same time, my heart sank because I didn't know that how we were actually going to build it. So we got Chrissy House, the engineer, and she's worked on uh, projects like the Avengers. Oh, we're talking about the Avengers, not the you know John Steed Avengers. And Guardians of the Galaxy was able to turn around a crazy design into an engineerable piece of scenery. Uh, so she says, Phil ran me up and asked me, how do you fancy working on a career-ending job? Because uh, if fans don't like it, and I don't think they do, frankly. I don't think they do. Uh, uh, if fans don't like it, uh, neither of us will ever work again. The title is fundamentally a British sci-fi classic and could easily be, uh, be so wrong. But as soon as I uh, as as soon as I knew Phil Collison and I were on the same page, we wanted to uh, do the job. So what they want to do? I designed a uh, designed the rotating. I designed rotating sets for Christopher Nolan's warping. Okay, that was good conception. And this one uh, and this one isn't even moving, so it wasn't a problem. Okay, uh, it is by some margins the largest tide uh, tide I can ever. Did the size did size matter? Uh, as we're telegraphing to the audience, that it, but it's, they do nothing with it. I mean, look what the, what they do with it. What they do with all that size? Fucking nothing. Oh, I mean, like even the production designs, they're like, <sighs> okay, they're sterile. God, I'd love to see the one where uh, it got rejected. Oh, this is this is the build. Man, those 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 guys to the CG version, they knew what they were doing. They nailed it 100%. Uh, uh, 
so is, is this a bigger, more ambitious era for the show? I think so. Yes, I know, but it's total hasn't been the, okay. You getting by on Millie Gibson sh- shooting up work more on Millie Gibson, who you just fired. Uh, it is by some the largest artist ever constructed. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I don't, uh, I think so. Fine. Russell never said that to me directly, but everybody knows that TARDIS is bigger on the inside, and there was always uh, uh, lots to discuss how much bigger it is on the inside. I think Russell wanted to underline, yeah, but it was fun when they went off down corridors and stuff. Like, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Peter Davis's TARDIS was huge, right? And it was, it was just rooms. Uh, here, let's see if we can find Paul McGann's. TARDIS interior. One second. There's some really. There are some uh, very good images of it. Hang on. Tools. Um, yeah, it really, it really is. It's my it's my favorite uh, 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 TARDIS interior. Where is it? Here we go. Here we get some. Uh, uh, Pull up some images. There's that. Uh, large images. That's not a bad one there. That's a bit dark, but does the trick. How's that one? These images downloading or what? Oh, now it's just annoying. Come on. Come on, TARDIS console. You can do it. Uh, here. Try one more time for this one. I want to do is save as. We'll try that. Save uh, image as. Is it working? Hang on. Here we go. Oh, at last. Oh, man, it's so small. Uh, where am I? Like, okay, this TARDIS interior, I find like w- w- this way more compelling, right? Is is that I love I love that console. I love the Jules Verne look. It, it to me that looks much more convincing as a TARDIS, as an, a, like an Edwardian time traveler, right? This is the, the one they have is just stark and boring. It's beyond. It's genuinely beyond me. Wait, where'd it go? Oh, yeah, it's like. Uh, wait, wait. No, we gotta find a bit. Uh, so we built as big as we could. So I say that's forty feet total in diameter and forty radius. That's eighty by uh, eighty to ninety feet in the wide here. Let me see if I can find Brian Hitch. Brian Hitch Tardis design. Because the uh, I, oh here it is. It's so much better. Oh god, kills me how much better. It, let me see if I can find a large version of it. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, it's so much better. It's crazily better than than what they put on screen. Save as. Hitch. Oh, second downloads. I went over here. Yeah. So, like, okay, if you had all that money, wait, wait, wait. Where's, where's the right screen? Where is it? Do it. If you had all that money, you could do the boring piece of shit we saw, or this. I mean that looks good, right? I mean, like that's good. That has the same idea. I mean, fine. So they want to do this with like uh, wheelchair friendly. So fine. But uh, uh, you know, you got like you've got this Edwardian time travel feel, right? And the time road again. This so it's vastly superior. I mean, vastly, vastly, vastly superior. Doing the same job way better. Uh uh Wooden Tardis is an honorable mention. Yeah, that's that's season 14. I like season 14. 
this is just so it just it dies. Uh, so it's a, uh, real estate is really uh, so I think the scale oh, wait, where am I hang on I think the scale can, uh, can be multiple things scale can uh, come in size at first and the right impact or it can be the size of the planet so scale is weird the emotional impulse something really small can have a vast scale uh, and makes sense. The, the real estate is re re really interesting in Doctor Who. When the Doctor runs down a corridor, you often need to run down uh, run down the corridor for a while. So the uh, the corridor needs to be very long. With the times because the Doctor is very energetic, we need to we need space that he could really open up. About, well, I guess I got to see it in action. And they, they say like his filming has been very good inside the Tars. We haven't seen it. Yet. The, uh, the TARDIS scenes are certainly suffering from being a bit static in the past, so uh, making these scenes a little more kinetic. Uh, I think it was about making them full of joy. I hate them trying to make everything full of joy. Just tell the fucking story. And it's not about joy. It's about their joy. My joy! It's not about joy. It's about their narcissistic joy. Uh, that's what Russell used when I first met him more than two years ago. Uh, he wanted to have... So much joy in Doctor Who that where and when the uh, Doctor enters the TARDIS and starts around, you see that immediately. Well, again, Russell, for you, for your for your joy is based on your insane religion, right? It's it, it's based on your insane fucked up religion that chicks have dicks. Okay, uh, um, yeah, man, this is a bad idea. <laughs> Uh, David then walked on immediately ra uh, ran around every single bit like a tomcat making it his territory and now Shooty completely owns it I mean he really owns it, okay, we'll have to see it the shape of the new condo is technically toroidal which is massive donut shaped yeah, that makes sense uh, Russell described it as a cavernous uh, spher uh, spherical place uh, so it was important to get the right shape although it's not technically spherical, it's toroidal uh, of the con fine, uh, because we had to squash it slightly into the stage. Okay, let's talk about uh, this word to quicken the pulse of any self explanatory fan roundels. Okay, so I wanted to get back to the clean white roundels. I love the honeycomb pattern of Pertwee uh, and Tom Baker Tardises, but they were quite difficult on uh, uh, quite difficult on a sphere. So we uh, so it uh, looked about uh, it, uh, it looked really messy and noisy when uh, uh, when we tiled them. Uh, so uh, sorry, it looked really messy. Whereas when we tiled them, it looked clean and sci-fi in a way that th uh, they were the trickiest things because there are so, uh, so many. Uh, how many exactly? Well, let's have a look again. Okay, that's interesting. Well, what's the classic here? Are we... Oh, so let's look at classic Doctor Who TARDIS interior. Uh, we'll do it. Oh, I see what they're saying. So if they did them where they don't match up, oh, you see what's here? Can you? How big is this? Yeah. Copy. Uh, let's see image address. Copy image address. Do that. Doink. So you see, like the rounders, they don't. They they they're offset. They they don't match up each row. So when if they did that uh, uh, over here. Yeah, I can see that looking r really messy. But even on these, like you had the the columns in between each one to give them form, right? So, and th and that's why these half ones are really quite cool. So I think if you box them into into boxes of what is it one two three of like f f uh, four and a half, uh, uh, yeah, then it, again with these half ones are really cool. But yeah, okay. It just 
It just body spent up nothing, isn't it? Um, fine. So how many? Who gives? Uh, how many of them? There's seven hundred sixty-eight. Every round door contains an individual LED, allowing the walls to transform into a range of colors and patterns. Uh, I can't take credit for that. I said cheekily, "What if we could illuminate uh, uh, every one of them?" And they uh, and they were uh, and a lot of rolled eyes around the room. But Matt Gray, the DP, director of uh, uh, director of photography for Special One, please looked uh, uh, took up the gauntlet to solve the problem. So. Uh, the design of the tile is now intrinsically linked to the lighting point. It is like like that was an afterthought, and that's the only and that's the only thing that really makes it work. There was one version where we, when we animate it, it sort of wipes around the room, uh, and another one where they kind of grade up uh, uh, grade up from the floor. Uh, the idea that they're uh, sort of an extension of uh, of a time rotor, uh, giving the indicator. Okay, yeah, that sounds reasonably cool. Uh, extension of of uh, of the time rotor, but and yeah, no, I like that respect. There. And and f frankly, I think the uh, the Capaldi Tardis was, was was particularly good at that, right? But again, the Capaldi the Tardis, and frankly, the Matt Smith one that preceded it, and the and the previous one. They had character to them. This this is the character of the current era. Bland. Uh, time rose was tricky because we uh, we didn't have money for anything technical. Uh, it's all smoke and mirrors. Uh, and mo mo model makers at Wall Studio work miracles with what they had. Okay, I mean it. That's probably the most important bit. Again, the McGann one is the way to go. Right, I mean, I hate to be the one to tell you this. Um, where we're doing so, Doctor Who sits down uh, with David Tennant on the set. Oh, fuck off! He likes it, I'm sure. Uh, does the color scheme th uh, through all the twelve? And, you know, very retro. Yeah, fuck off, David. Busy sucking over his cock. Leave me alone. Uh, um, Multi-platform nature of design presented its own engineering challenges. I'm bored reading this. Do you remember when uh, they opened the Millennium Bridge between St. Paul's and uh, modern Tate London? Yes. And how too many people uh, walked on it and you bounced in step uh, and it all got a bit weird. This had a sim similar growing pains. Okay. Uh, ideally, when the structure... In oh, man, that must be terrifying. When the structure, including the, uh, uh, the exterior, needed to be built, uh, it needed to be built still. It, got, it must have been a fortune. Getting hold of the still was really difficult and expensive. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Still is gone through the roof right now. Right? Music of the spheres. The jukebox was Russell's request as Paul Sims uh, of the TARDIS, a uh, new onboard entertainment system. We talked about armchairs and hat stands and previous articles that have been in TARDIS before, but Russell landed on a jukebox early on. Again, but couldn't you have anything more in there? Right? I mean, like, couldn't you? It's just so barren and empty. It really is. It's barren and empty. Bland. Barren and empty, bland and boring. Oh, oh, let's put jukebox in. That'll do the trick. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Is it the same jukebox from, oh, from uh, 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 the end of the world? Uh, oh, Dr. Alex is here. How are you doing, Dr. Alex? Um, uh, but Russell and Duke was only, I'm sure I knew he was going to music was going to play a big part in the coming series. Somebody tell me every episode was a musical episode, <laughs> maybe it wouldn't surprise me at all. I mean, you could call the first episode a, a musical episode, right? Well, set on uh, while, while I set recently, Doctor Who magazine had a quick poke through the doctor's record collection in terms of being packed with musical memories. From former Avengers, that's uh, now that's what I call Doctor Who baggers include uh, ticket to ride the uh, the chase. Uh, fuck, who gives a shit? Uh, who gives a shit? I came down to you to see uh, the space and started drawing up the still work. And I always uh, I always like to start with a backbone of a set and go, I don't give a shit. I'm not into building sets, so we decided for a traditional scaffold structure. On the outside, instead, that uh, that means there was more 
flex to uh, flexing it when he when he walked on it. Uh, so we installed supports underneath to give it more st stabil uh, stability. Uh, um, yeah, I'm not, I don't feel safe on this. <laughs> like I don't. I'm sorry. Uh, what was it Chris said the only real problem uh, was the crew thinking it wasn't safe. It doesn't look safe. Uh, uh, we had a, a structural engineer who I've worked with for years in film and in uh, film industry come and prove it was unlike uh, unlike still the scaffolding structure creaks as it settles, but it couldn't fall down. Oh fuck me! I don't like if I if I'm a fat old gaffer. And I sit on that and go, I'm like, fuck off, I'm not getting on. Union? Get my fucking union involved. Would it be fair to say this is the most iconic design of the team has ever worked on? Uh, I've been loving to work on some great jobs in my career, but I never had uh, ended up working on a TV show that uh, used to scare the pants of me when I was, uh, me and my sister, uh, when I was a kid. Also in production, uh, every bracket I've done ever since Event Horizon, I followed with the traditional... Hiding of a bit of R two D two in plain sight. Oh, that'll be on the on the console. I think I've already seen it. It's uh, it's yeah. And I fucking hate that console. Oh, I hate everything about it. Uh, I approached by a couple of production designers early on in the process, interested in designing the uh, uh, design the is this design the show. Yeah, in, uh, design the show. And quickly realized that they didn't ne uh, that they didn't necessarily want to design the Doctor Who. They really wanted to design the TARDIS. So I was, I was very pleased to be able to offer to Phil the opportunity that he deserves because uh, it's phenomenal. Phil says, uh, I think the most iconic design anybody in, uh, in anyone's career. I love the Star Destroyer better than this. Uh, and, I, uh, and it was my job to look after Guardians of the Galaxy uh, and the, uh, the Milano and the Quintet. Uh, which had loads of Marvel movies, but the titles were the first uh, of its kind. It's only uh, and there's only ever been a few of them before. Uh, a few of them over over the years. Um, apart from the Doctor, it's the heart of the show. Ah, uh, it's just um, money badly spent. I mean, it's, it's the only way of describing it. It's money badly spent. I mean, compare. Oh, where's this one? Here, wait, where's the uh, where, where's the Brian Hitch one? Here we go. Open with Google Chrome. Right. I mean, like. I mean, like, like compare that to this. It's not even close. Oh, it's it's so tragic, right? It is so tragic. Yeah. Where's the uh, Open with Google Chrome. Ugh, that's ridiculous. Yeah, let's see if we can find a better image of Paul McGann. So, Paul McGann TARDIS interior doink. Let's see if we find a good one. Large. Uh, where's it? Here we go. That's a good version of it. Copy image address, and we go doink. Oh, piss off. Wait, is that, what was that? I click through to that. Is that, that give me thing? Oh, there you go. Uh, um, nope, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> okay. Uh, BBC Archive, right? Um, there you go. It, it's, uh, and even the time road, it's just bloody pieces of. Plastic, yeah, with light f filled through them. It's so much better. <laughs> right? It's just, it's so much better. It so much more understands what Doctor Who is. And I get they're trying to go back to the original. But this isn't it. I'm so, this, this really genuinely isn't it. The, uh, uh, the, I, I it, and it doesn't seem futuristic to me. Let's have a quick look, see what they say in uh, SFX about it. They had a whole feature about it in there as well. We'll just look look at the pictures essentially. Uh, yeah, I get. 
Yeah, all this stuff. I mean, I like they weathered. That. Okay, well, it's just like, why is all this weathered and old and everything like uh, uh, sleek and new outside it? Like, why doesn't it match? It's just kind of annoying, right? This looks like generic sci-fi show. Although well, there's a bit of R two D two hidden in plain sight, please. It's not hard to see, darling. Yeah, this is just so epically unimpressive. I'm sorry. Uh, shooting might be great, but like, fuck me. This is, um, yeah, shite. Best I could describe it. Th this is absolute shite. My name's Vila Beck and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah!